So we've talked about Rutherford's model, which just as a reminder, is going to be with the protons and neutrons in the nucleus and the electrons moving around in empty space. There were some concerns though from the scientific community and they couldn't figure out why these negative electrons wouldn't get pulled into the nucleus because the uh, nucleus is positive and electrons are negative and opposites attract. So Niels Bohr came up with the idea of, yeah, we've got the neutrons and protons in the nucleus and the electrons are outside the nucleus in empty space, but they're actually in orbits. They're orbiting around the nucleus just like the planets orbit around the sun. So that was sort of the reason why they didn't get pulled into the nucleus. But there's a lot to Bohr's model, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write some stuff out, and it's all important, um, but I'm going to tie it together. So if along the way you're kind of thinking, what the heck, just stick with it. Okay. So electrons revolve around the nucleus in circular orbits of specific radii. Okay. There's only certain radii that are available, and each orbit has a specific amount of energy. He introduced the idea of energy levels. While in an orbit, an electron does not emit or, give or absorb energy. So in that orbit, it just has a specific amount of energy. We say that it's quantized. That just means it has a specific amount of energy. An electron can be promoted to a higher energy level by absorbing energy. It has to be a specific amount of energy. The lowest possible energy is called the ground state, and any higher energy level is called the excited state. So Bohr's model basically looks like these energy levels or orbits. So here's an orbit. We call it the first energy level, or n equal to 1. The second orbit, okay, the electrons are theoretically orbiting around, orbiting around, orbiting around. The orbits get farther from the nucleus, but notice that the distance decreases each time. The next one would be even closer. The electrons emit energy when they return to lower energy levels, and since only certain energy levels are possible, only certain energy changes are possible. So this is supposed to be that diagram with the circles, but because circles are hard to draw, we just drew them as straight lines. So this is that diagram that I just had. And this is the inner circle, and then the next one. So the idea is that electrons, this is your ground state, n equal to 1, electrons can absorb energy and go up to higher energy levels. They can exist on energy levels, but not between. It's kind of like climbing a ladder. You can't stand between the rungs. You have to be on a rung. So when they absorb energy, they go to higher energy levels and then they can fall back down to lower energy levels and they emit energy. So there's sort of a huge number of possible transitions that could happen here. They can fall from say n equal to 6 to 2, 5 to 2, 4 to 2, 3 to 2, 5 to 1, 4 to 1, 3 to 1, 6 to 5, 5 to 4, any sort of number of possible transitions, but they have to be on energy levels. So this is sort of a more organized picture of that, okay? This tries to give you all of the possible transitions. So this first yellow series is when they're falling from n equal to 7 down to 1, the ground level. The second, this green series, is when they're falling from higher energy levels down to the second energy level. So all transitions are possible. This blue one is when they're falling down to the third, or n equal to three. And the fourth, this red one, is when they're falling down to the fourth. And there, there are more series. You could give a series where they're falling down to the fifth, or et cetera, et cetera. The series we really care about to talk about, we're not going to memorize Lyman, Balmer, Passion, Bracket. But the Balmer series is important because there's four transitions from six to two, 5 to 2, 4 to 2, and 3 to 2, which give off amounts of energy that correspond to wavelengths, 410 nanometers, 434 nanometers, etc., that correspond to colors in the visible spectrum that we can actually see. 
So if you look through a spectroscope at a hydrogen atom, and we'll do this in class, you're going to see four lines. You're going to see a red one that is caused by an electron falling from the third energy level down to the second. You're going to see a green line that is caused by an electron falling from the fourth down to the second, etc., etc. So Bohr did a really good job of explaining why we see these lines, introducing the idea of energy levels. Unfortunately, we also discover that Bohr's model only works for atoms with one electron. So it's really good at explaining hydrogen and somewhat useless for anything else. But it did give us a beginning to the next and last model that we'll learn next, which is quantum mechanics.